Welcome everyone to the fifth lecture of symmetric functions and representation theory. So last time we talked about geomorphisms. So these are linear transformations between G modules that behave well with the action of the group. So if we have a linear transformation theta from V to U, such that if we take a vector V and apply the action of G or the first submodule, and then we take that vector in V by theta to u, that's the same as first take the vector v, uh, apply theta, so it goes to the vector space u, and then use the and, and and then apply the action of g. So this holds for all elements of the group and all vectors v in in my module v. So in terms of matrix representations, let's remember what that means. So if if we have two matrix representations x and y of dimensions d and d prime, they're homomorphic if there is a d prime by d matrix t such that for all, all elements in the group, T times the matrix XG is the same as the, the product of the matrix YG times T. And we saw um, Schur's lemma that characterizes the homomorphisms between irreducible G modules. So if V and U are irreducible G modules, and we have a G homomorphism from V to U, then either the homomorphism is an isomorphism, or it is the zero map. And we proved um, th this lemma, uh, and so we used the fact that the kernel of theta and the image of theta are submodules, so they're pretty restricted if V and U are irreducible G modules. Okay, so um, so today the goal, so that, that was last time. The goal of today is to look at some corollaries of Schur's lemma, and then we will move to group characters. Okay, so let's start with the first uh, corollary. So let's see uh, what Schur's lemma means in terms of matrix representations. So if we have two irreducible matrix representations, Um, and uh, there exists, um, and, uh, and and there is a um, homomorphism, uh, and, and there is a matrix. There is a matrix T such that T X G equals um, Y G times T for all G in the group. Um, then either T is square invertible or T is the zero matrix. Okay, so that's that would be just directly translating um, what, Schur, what Schur's lemma is saying in terms of matrix representations. Okay? So that's the first corollary. Um, now, what happens if, um, if, if we have a, a homomorphism, if we have a kind of a, a homomorphism between uh, a representation X um, and x. So if, what if x equals y? So if, so then we would say that, um, so if there is a matrix T such that um, T xg equals xgt for all elements of the group, then we're saying that this matrix T commutes with all the matrices XG for all the elements in the group. So then um, by corollary one, so, sorry, if in addition, if X is, is an irreducible representation, Uh, 
um, then either, then again, the same thing would hold true. Either T is invertible or T is the zero matrix. Okay? So, so that's just by corollary one. But now, If, so, so, so now let's assume that our ground field are the complex numbers, okay? So we can um, we can rewrite this relation uh, as follows, okay? So we can just subtract from both sides um, the the t times a constant c, like the matrix t scaled by c. So then we have this um, equation here. Oh. I don't know. I made a mistake here, so sorry about that. So I meant to say if I have T minus CI times XG. Okay? So, um, so we have this equation, but now um, if the field is C, since it's algebraically closed, uh, T has an eigenvalue. Lambda, lambda. So let C be lambda and um, V be a non zero eigenvector. Okay. Then, uh, then, then for that, for that C, this, um, we have the same equation, but now, um, since v is an eigenvector, so I should put lambda here, um, we, we're going to have that t minus lambda i times my eigenvector is zero. So I have a, so I have a, a non-zero vector that, that is in the null space of this matrix, t minus lambda i. So, so therefore, um, if that's the case, then um, I don't have the possibility that, if from Schur's lemma, that t minus c i is invertible because I have an element, an, an, an untrivial element in the kernel. So this is out. Of, so, so this is not an option. So the only possible option for this equation is that t minus c i is a zero matrix. In other words, t is a scalar matrix. Okay, and that's our second corollary. So let me. Let me state it. So if X is an irreducible um, representation of G over the complex over the complexes over the, over the complex numbers, uh, and so then the only matrix that commutes with all matrices XG are scalar multiples of the identity. Okay, so let me so let me remind you why that's the case. So because if right because if if we have such an equation if if um, here here I have a matrix so if I call this T prime. Then um, I know that T prime has an untrivial kernel because um, I, the matrix T itself has an eigenvector. Uh, so this matrix cannot be invertible. This matrix T prime cannot be invertible. So by Schur's lemma, the only possibility is that it's the zero matrix. So therefore, uh, T would have to be um, uh, as equal to CI, so a scalar multiple of the identity. Okay. So that's uh, a second corollary. Okay, so this finishes um, our 
current um, coverage of of homomorphisms of representations. So now let's um, move on to group characters. Um, okay, so that's the next topic. Group characters, okay. Okay, so so um, so what's so, so what's the motivation? We want to study um, an invariant of um, of representations and a simple invariant that's just an element of the field. Okay, so not a, not kind of capture the whole matrix, but capture just one um, um, a value in the, of the field. Okay, so let's um, put the main definition. So if um, let's start with matrix representations. So if X is a matrix representation of G, um, then so the so the character. Oh, The character of X um, G or G in the group is defined as follows. So it's denoted by the Greek letter chi, and it's the trace of the matrix XG. Okay, so that's our first definition. We can also define this for submodules. So if um, if V is a G module, then the character of V at G is chi G, it's the trace of XG, where, where XG is a matrix representation with some basis of V. Okay, so this second definition um, is, 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 well, we have to check that this second definition is well defined. So, if, so for example, if we have two matrix representations of V, then we can obtain one from the other by a change of basis. Then x, x of g, then y of g can be obtained from x of g by multiplying um, by a change of basis matrix. Okay, but then um, the trace of y of g, well, it's the trace of t x g t inverse, and um, nice property of traces is that if you have if you have the trace of in the matrix a, a b c the trace is invariant if we cyclically shift the matrices so it's equal to the trace of b c a equal to the trace uh, of c a b and so on so if we use this cyclic property of the trace then this is the same as the trace of T inverse T X G and then T inverse and T become the identity and this is the same as the trace of X G okay so if we have two different matrix representations of the submodule V uh, the core these matrices are going to have the same trace okay so the character is well defined okay so that's the main definition of today um, some terminology, if the representation is irreducible, uh, we say that the character is irreducible. 
Okay. The other thing is that if the representation is one, so if you have that one dimensional representation, um, then maybe yeah, yeah. So then um, the character of G is the same as the if we have a matrix representation XG, it's just the same as the one by one entry. Okay, and we call these um, one like one dimensional characters. We call them linear characters. Okay. So um, let's look now at some examples. Finally, so imagine that we have the regular representation. And their group is a symmetric group. Okay, then the character of a permutation pi would be the trace of the permutation matrix of pi. Okay, and so this is going to count how many ones I have in the diagonal. But I have a one in diagonal if I have if the permutation has a fixed point. So this is the number of fixed points of um, of pi, and a fixed point is an element i such that pi i is equal to i. Okay. So for example, if I look at the trace of the permutation one goes to 3, 2, and 4, 5, then this is going to be 1, because I only have one fixed point, 2. Okay? So that's our first example of a character. Let's look at another example. So if I have a group G and my representation is just the the so if we have the regular representation, so um, yeah, so I mean I, I think the the first the example the pre previous example was the defining representation. So sorry. So this is the regular representation. Okay. So the group acting on itself. Um, then what is going to be the character of G? Well, that's the trace of this matrix uh, XG, okay? But um, this matrix XG is some permutation matrix because the group is acting on itself. So, um, so it's so, so I'm going to be so as G acts on the group, it's going to be permuting the elements of of, of G. Okay, so because it's a permutation matrix, and I look at its trace, it's the number of fixed points. Um, but uh, let's see what a fixed point would be in this case. So, if there is if 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 there is an element in the group, so some g i in g, such that when I act on g, I get back g i, then this implies that g is the identity. So so therefore. When I look at the character of G, when I look at the number of fixed points, I'm going to have, so, so there are two possibilities. Either, uh, either the, the, the trace is the size of G, and that happens if, the, if little, little G is the identity, or I have zero. Because um, if G is not the identity, if I act, if G acts on the group, it's going to be permuting the elements, but it's not going to fix um, it's not going to fix any element except the identity. Okay. So 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 then you will have no fixed points. Okay. Okay. So that's our second example. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess and as I mentioned, if we we have we've seen examples of dimensional representations like the trivial one. So the character in that case would just be always one. Okay. 
So now uh, let's look at some properties of characters. So let X and Y be matrix representations with characters chi and psi. So these are matrix representations, sorry, of G with characters chi and psi. So let's look at some properties. If you look at the character of the identity, um, well, by, by just the, 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 the definition of a matrix representation, the corresponding matrix is the identity matrix. So if I look at its trace, I'm going to get the dimension of the representation. Okay? Uh, I should say, well, I should mention the dimension of the matrix. Okay, so um, D, what I usually call D. Okay. The second one is that um, if I if if G and H are in the same conjugacy class of G, then they have the same characters. They have the same value of the character. Okay. In other words, the character is constant in conjugacy classes. Okay. And the third one is that if X and Y are isomorphic or equivalent, that's both terms are the same, then the characters are the same. So chi of G would be the same as psi of G for all elements in the group. So let's um, see why these things are true. So let me look at the proof. So I think one holds because the associated matrix of the, of the, the, the associated matrix of the identity is the identity matrix. So therefore the character is just the, the size, the number of ones, okay? Um, so let's look at two. So if G and H are in the same conjugacy class, it means that they're conjugate. So it means that there is an element in the group such that um, if I conjugate G by G1, I'm going to get uh, H. Okay. But then um, if I look at the character of H, well, that's the same as the as the uh, trace of the matrix corresponding to this conjugation, and then um, this is going, and then and then here again, I can I can cyclically um, shift. Well, sorry, I guess uh, before I do this, so by properties of representations, this breaks into the product of the matrix X G xg1, sorry, xg, xg1 inverse, okay, let me just put some space, let me just bring this a little bit here, okay, okay, so, let me just do some cosmetic things here, okay, and now, um, by the cyclic property of the trace, this is going to be the same as the trace of the middle matrix, okay? Because the other ones, I, I, I apply the cyclic symmetry and then the first, this matrix, is going to cancel with this matrix, okay? So, uh, so then I get this, so, so then, uh, and this is just the trace of G, so this is the character of G, okay? So the trace of H is the same as the trace of G, okay? So the character of H is the same as the character of G. Okay, so that's the second part. So how about the third one? So um, recall from earlier today that if, if X and Y are isomorphic, there is a matrix T 
such that, uh, and it's, so it's invertible, such that y of g can be obtained by taking x of g and conjugating by the matrix T. So then again, by the same kind of cyclic property, we're going to have that the trace of the character psi of g is the trace of y of g, and this is going to be the trace of this big thing. And by this prop the cyclic property of the trace, this is the trace of xg, and this is just the character of g. Okay? And that finishes the proof of this proposition. Okay? So characters have nice properties. Okay, so let me let me get this down. Let me maybe take this up. Okay? So Let's make some remarks about this. So by two, um, characters are examples of class functions. So what are class functions? So these are functions from the group to the ground field that are constant. They have the same value in each conjugacy class such that f of g equals f of h whenever g and h are in the same conjugacy class. Okay? So, um, class functions actually form a vector space because I can add them and they're still class functions and I can scale them by an element of the field and they're still class functions. And this vector space has its dimension. So maybe I should uh, call this vector space something. I'm going to call it RG. And the, and the, and the dimension uh, of this vector space is the number of conjugacy classes. Okay, because um, I could find the, I, I could actually describe a basis of RG by taking what are called characteristic functions of conjugacy classes. So these are functions that are indexed by a conjugacy class, and they are one for all elements in that conjugacy class and zero everywhere. And they actually are a basis of, of this space. Okay? So so then characters are examples of class functions. Okay? That's the first comment. The second one is that from three, so that so from three we have that if I have two equivalent representations, they have the same characters. Um, surprisingly, the converse of this result is also true. The converse of three. The converse. Uh, The converse of three is also true. So, so, so not only do equivalent representations have the same character, but also if you have two representations that have the same character, then the representations are equivalent. Okay, and we will show this later. We'll prove it in the next section. Okay, so this is pretty. This is going to be a pretty nice property of characters. Okay, so um, from these uh, observations, we can store the characters of a group uh, in in a table called a character table. So this is an array of the following form. So on the top, I list the conjugacy classes of G. Okay, so here, for example, I have a conjugacy class K, 
of the group and my rows here are going to be indexed by irreducible representations. So irreducible representations of G. Okay, so here I'm going to have some representation X. Okay, and then here I would have the value, um, oh, sorry, I guess I, I meant that these are irreducible characters. Okay, so here I would have a chi, and here I would have the value of that character and that conjugacy class. Okay, so that's what a character table is. Um, now, the, I have a column for each conjugacy class, and I have a row for each irreducible character. But a priori, I do not know that there's finitely many irreducible characters, but this is actually true. So there's a finite number of irreducible characters, and I mean like inequivalent irreducible characters. Uh, we will prove this later. Um, and the number of such characters, of such inequivalent, irreducible characters is the number of conjugacy classes. So we will see this also later, but in particular this character table is a square array. Okay, it has the same number of rows and co as columns. Okay, so let's look at some examples of, of character tables. Okay, so let's look as one example. So here let's take the group to be the symmetric group on three elements. So what are my conjugacy classes? So they're indexed by cycle types. So I either have the cycle type 111, so the permutations that have three fixed points, so i.e. that this only contains the identity. I have permutations with cycle type 21, so I have a transposition and I have three cycles, so permutations with cycle type three. Okay, so my character table would have three columns. Now by this fact that the number of conjugacy classes is the number of, 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 of so the number of irreducible characters is the number of conjugacy classes uh, of the group, I should expect to see three characters, three irreducible characters. Okay, so what are they? Well, we already know two of them, Mainly, we have seen two degree one representations, and these are these agree with their characters, their linear characters. So we have the trivial representation or the trivial character. So that's going to be one everywhere. It's going to be one for every permutation. Okay, so this is the trivial character. We've also seen the sign representation. So. So the, the corresponding character are just the values of that representation. So in the identity, I'm one. In, a, in the transposition, I'm minus one. And in a three cycle, the sign is one. Okay? And then there is one more that we will see later. Okay? So this is kind of what part of the character table would look like for S3. Let's look at another example. So we haven't seen the we haven't talked about the cyclic the cyclic group in a while. So let's look at it again. So let's look at C four. So we have a cyclic group with four elements. Okay. Um, so this group is abelian. So the conjugacy classes have size one.
So every element of the group is in its own conjugacy class. So if I if we were to draw the table, I would have uh, a conjugacy class for each group element. So I have four columns. And okay, so so because there's four conjugacy classes, the size of the group, we should expect four irreducible characters. Okay. But if you recall, uh, we discussed the degree one representations of the cyclic group. So recall that C4 has four degree one representations. So um, since they're degree one, they're irreducible. So I have four irreducible representations, but I only have four in total since the character table is square. So we happen to have already found all the irreducible characters. They're just these four degree representations. And if you remember, they were just defined by the value at g, and, and the value at g had to be, uh, in this case, a fourth root of unity in general, an nth root of unity if your cyclic group has n elements. So either I have one, i, minus one, or minus i, and that everyone, everything else would be determined. Okay, so I have minus one, I have one here, minus one, I have one, and I have i. Okay, so that's actually the character table of C4. Okay, so next time we're going to explore some properties that character tables have, and in doing so, we will prove these, outstand these outstanding things we have not shown. Mainly that if two, if um, if we have two representations of the group of the same group, and their characters agree, then the representations are isomorphic. We will also show that there's a finite number of irreducible characters, and the number of irreducible characters is the, is the number of conjugacy classes. So we have several things to show, and a peak of, of how we're gonna do that, it's hidden in these tables already. So let me, um, so, so let me uh, preview that a little bit, okay? So let me get rid of this here. Um, so, do you notice something interesting about the rows of this character table of C4? So, these are like, you could think of them as, as vectors of size 4, and if you notice, here the columns, sorry, the, the rows, are orthogonal. As vectors in C4. So, so for example, if you um, if, if we dot, for example, the second row with the first row, we see that it, we we get uh, we get zero. Okay. And similarly, if you say dot the second row with the third row, for example, you're going to get. So let me take, for example, the dot the second and third row. I'm going to get one plus i times minus one plus minus one times one plus uh, minus i times one. And this equals one minus i minus one minus, oh, um, I think I might have done something wrong here. I took the second and third, so this is going to be uh, plus i, okay? And this is zero, okay? So that's kind of, Interesting, and if you check the other ones, you you you, you in in the character table of C four, you'll notice the same thing. So um, if you try the second table, uh, we don't seem to have that phenomenon. Like we only have two rows, but if you take if you kind of think view view these as vectors in C three, they're not orthogonal. If you take the dot product, you're going to get um, one, not zero. But you to see kind of the same orthogonality, you have to kind of unfold this character table. So here you're viewing it in terms of the conjugacy classes, and there's only three conjugacy classes, but these conjugacy classes have different sizes. So let's kind of unfold this. So we have one identity element, okay? We have 
how many transpositions do we have? We have three of them. So this one here in the middle actually corresponds to three ones because there's three permutations that have that are transpositions. And how many cy three cycles do we have? We have two of them. So we have we can put two one. So now we get a vector of this that's of the same size as the group. So uh, size six. And if we unwrap the sign representation, we're going to get one. We're going to get three minus ones, and we're going to get two ones. And now, if you take the dot product of these two vectors in C six, we're going to get zero. So now these are orthogonal. Okay. So next time we're going to explore this interesting orthogonality of characters.